About 14,500 partisan Maryland fans as they welcome the top team in the nation defending national champion, the Duke Blue Devils. Hello everyone, Dick Hendrick with Billy Packer, our privilege to be here today and it is a privilege ticket to be able to watch this encounter. Let's go back a year. It was the game of last season on this court. Maryland led by 10 with 54 seconds left and then Jason Williams of Duke took over. A great overtime battle and kind of set the stage for the rest of the year. They faced each other four times last year, Duke winning three of them. Well, if this game were a movie in the spirit of the Oscar nominations, we've got a lot of potential Oscars to give out. The top 20 players in the nation for the Naismith Award, five, five of them are in this game, and we'll look to the backcourt for the leading scores. Two of the great backcourt players we've seen in college basketball in a long, long time, Dick. What I love about them are not only their statistics, which you can see right there, but their ability to play big and big games. This should really be exciting to see them go, even if it's not head-to-head. -head. It should be an exciting encounter, and we're ready for the starting lineups right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Volvo. Volvo for life. Advil. Nothing you can buy is proven to work better than Advil. And by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hey guys. Never pay for long distance again with Singular Wireless. And right now, get 3,500 night and weekend bonus minutes plus a great deal on a Nokia phone. Nationwide self-expression is singular. Milk chocolate, soft nougats, Reese's peanut butter. Go, 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 go. New Reese's fast break. Refuel and go. Free lube oil and filter with the purchase and installation of VSD brakes. He'll thank you. Thanks for getting new brakes and not splattering my guts all over the road. <laughs> Midas, ah. we do that. Think of e-business as a game. You got players. You got management. You got opponents who don't always play by the rules. This game takes strategy. And the ability to move that metaphorical ball that is information with more money on the line than in any other game that's ever been played. E-business isn't just a game, it's the game. So if you're going to play, play to win. Men think about sports every day of the year. Men think about women every 5.3 seconds. Men think about soap? Probably never, because they're all the same. Except this one. It's new high-endurance deodorant soap from Old Spice, with scents made just for guys. So you won't smell like a bunch of wildflowers all day. Maybe now women will think about you every 5.3 seconds. Look, if you try it and you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you some of your old stuff. Guaranteed. New high-endurance deodorant soap. And back at Cole Fieldhouse with the starting lineups. Duke's winningest ever coach, Mike Krzyzewski. Now in his 22nd year after the stumble at Florida State, they've rattled off 11 straight wins by an average of almost 23 points per victory. Dunleavy presents matchup problems at 6'9". Boozer, the big man in the middle, and Dante Joe's a top defender. He'll probably draw Juan Dixon. Jason Williams, the top candidate for player of the year in the college ranks this year, and Chris Duhon in the top 20 in assists and steals. Mike Krzyzewski and uh, his game plan is to build toward March. This is a big game, he told me an hour ago. He says, but it's not nearly as big as the games we're going to be playing in March. 
Gary Williams, who was a captain of the Maryland team back in the late 60s. And here are his talented and experienced starters with seniors, two of them on the front line, Mouton and Baxter, the leading rebounder. Chris Wolcox coming strongly in every game. Juan Dixon leads in scoring. Steve Blake is an excellent playmaking guard. We're ready to go, Maryland and White. Duke wears their black road jerseys in which they're 29 and two. Those old blue jerseys are gone. They're three and three uh, on the road with those. Dick Boozer was looking down and wasn't ready for the tap. Wilcox, the better leaper anyway, but really had an advantage there. Dixon with Williams, takes it to the hole, and scores! Juan Dixon. Oh, Juan had problems, as we know, against Jones in the first game this year. Two Maryland players go down, and finally it's a one against five, and Byron Bouton will pull it up. Smart play, didn't have the numbers, get back and get organized. Bouton for three, it's not there, and Boozer rebounds for Duke, and here come the Devils. There'll be no hesitation by either of these clubs. Jason Williams doesn't get the bounce, and Baxter has the rebound. Blake from the free throw line rattles out. Good block out by Dunleavy. This, this, Dick, this is the interesting matchup now. Wilcox on Dunleavy. What Dunleavy will do immediately is to step outside, taking a great rebound with him. Here he is outside, and he has to hit that shot, or Wilcox will not have to go out that quickly on him. But to go out on him, then he has the ability to put him on the floor and drive him. Go by him. Yeah, that's a tough matchup. Wilcox is fouled by Dunleavy. Dixon going by him. Dante Jones, who did a tremendous job holding Dixon to the season low of 10 points in the first game. Well, that was a tough shot on the run. And Chris Wilcox goes to the line. This talented sophomore from Whiteville, North Carolina, played his senior year at Enloe High in Raleigh. Makes it 3-0. He's 6'10", and we watched him yesterday, Billy. He had about five in a row from 40-foot range. Well, not where, obviously, Gary Williams would want him to be shooting in this game today, but what he showed me, it's interesting how you see that in practice, is he does have the ability to step out there as a future player and shoot that shot. Maryland with the early lead, 4 nothing. Here's that solid screen for Jason Williams, who likes to split that anytime somebody hedges against him. Dante Jones inside, batted away, and Baxter tips it to Wilcox. Maryland will have an advantage on the boards against Duke, and that has been true just about every time they play against each other. Baxter. Where they do have a problem is turning the ball over. Tried to feed it inside, last touch by Dunleavy and Boozer of Duke. Now we take the matchup on the other end of the floor, and Dunleavy shows his versatility by being able to play in the low post defensively against the likes of Wilcox. Mouton left alone sends Maryland to a 6-0 start. Mouton did not have a big game against Duke when they first played, but he has been on a tear of late. In the last five games, Mouton averaging 16 and a half points per game. Blake does a pretty good job against Jason Williams' crossover dribble. Batted away by Dixon, and the steal by Dixon, who leads his team once again in thefts. Blake for three, and that really would have had this Maryland crowd going crazy, and a foul is called on Baxter of the Terrapins. There you see again Dunleavy, who has grown to about 6'9 and a half, 6'10, being able to go up against a Baxter who's one of the nation's premier rebounders. We played two and a half minutes, and the Duke Blue Devils are 0 for 5 shooting. And the number two scoring team in the country is Duke having problems. Second to Kansas. And there is Blake sitting right down on Jason's penetrating dribble. Can't stop him. And that's what Williams did in game one down in Durham when he scored 34. He took the ball inside uh, with very regular effectiveness. 34 points, seven rebounds, eight assists in that game. Came up huge. There's a hold on Jones trying to keep Dixon from coming off the screen. A look at the standings in the Atlantic Coast Conference. If Maryland should win, they'd move a half game in front of Duke. Duke number one most of this season. Maryland in its history has never been ranked number one 
as the top college basketball team. They could with a win today. And Byron Mouton hits another jumper, and the lead is back to six. Maryland has been number two more than any team in the country that has also never been number one. So obviously it'd be quite an accomplishment. Dunley B for three. Not there. Baxter rips down the rebound, and here comes Blake. Wilcox does a good job going up against that jump shot and then breaking down floor. Muta can't make it three in a row, and Dunleavy collects for Duke. Duke has had some pretty open looks for Dunleavy, who has a tendency to be a guy that scores in streaks. Loser and a steal, steal by Mouton. No advantage here. Blake inside to Wilcox. And there's the case. Wilcox really running the floor beautifully. The last time down the court, he didn't get the ball. Mike Krzyzewski says he wants to see Dunleavy get some kind of shot here. Double screen up top for Jason Williams. Probably going to be a step out for Dunleavy on a jump shot. Williams dumps it off to Dunleavy, and Dunleavy connects. Good set play that time by Duke. Duke is not a team that runs a lot of set offense. As Mike Krzyzewski says, we don't coach an, an offense, we coach offense. But that was a set play. Inside Wilcox. He has six, and it's 12 to four, Terrapins. Four and a half into the game. Wilcox last year was coming off the bench, was a no factor in games against Duke, but he's come up big this year as one of the premier players in the league. Duhan can't connect on his three-point try, and Blake brings it in for Maryland. Dixon feeds Baxter, double team. Oh, Wilcox had to go off his hands and uh, try to save by Mouton. It goes out of bounds to Duke. Wise decision by Duhan not to try to reach for that ball and lose it. Timeout. Nearly five minutes played, and the fans here in Maryland share a 12 to 4 lead. It has the ground clearance of an SUV, the added security of all wheel drive, and all the safety features of a Volvo. Because while getting there is half the fun. Not worrying about getting there is the other, the all-wheel drive Volvo Cross Country. Two hours of hard riding, and I was hurting. My legs, my back, it even hurt to pedal downhill. So I took control with Advil. Doctors know that nothing, not Tylenol, not Aleve, nothing's proven stronger or lasts longer than Advil. Hey, the pain was strong, but Advil's stronger. You have the strength to get rid of pain. Take control. Take Advil. There's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that tastes awesome. No, 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 no. Get Selsun Power. It's a tenth hole at Riviera, 315-yard par four. You go for it off the tee? I know I would. The Nissan opens on CBS. You got to get it. Dick, a good set play called by Mike Krzyzewski as they came up the, the court. Dunleavy will set the screen. Jason Williams, of course, capable of doing anything, coming over the top, even breaking through at times. But what we're going to see right here, they're trying to get this set up so that Dunleavy can step outside and shoot the jumper. What happens, however, is that there is no good play by Maryland, and so Dunleavy sees the hole right down to the middle. Good job by Jason Williams to recognize what was available. Two guys reacting what the defense gave them. Two points for Dunleavy. And a version of pick and roll, and uh, Williams and Boozer worked that so effectively earlier this week against North Carolina State. 
Duke will do that sometimes where Boozer comes up and they set a double screen up high for Jason Williams. 12-4, Maryland leads. The Terrapins have not lost at home this year. They're 12-0. Boozer inside with a left hand. Dunleavy with a tap. It's 12-6, Dunleavy with four. Randall in the game, giving Baxter a little blow. Randall played extremely well against Duke in the first game. A junior college transfer is coming on strong. Ryan Randall's shot missed, and the Wilcox nearly with a spectacular follow. Great job by Maryland getting back. Norm Williams wants to launch that jump shot. And Dunleavy from three, and it's a 12-9 game as Dunleavy leads all scorers with seven. Kind of interesting. It's the first time Wilcox wasn't on any shot against the quicker man. He got the three-point shot off. Dixon. And Boozer rebounds for Duke. Dixon had problems getting that short jumper to fall against Georgia Tech the other night. He has got to hit his jump shot. Duhan running the show. Both uh, guards, Jason Williams and Chris Duhon, can play one or two, and whoever has the ball is the point guard. It works out that simply as Dante Jones back outside to Williams, who fires from three. Good job by Blake. He altered that leaving. shot. And Randall has it taken away by Boozer. Blake comes in to steal it for Maryland. Boy, you don't see many people take the ball away from Carlos Boozer when he has it with two hands. Mouton for two. And Randall over the back will pick up the foul. Dunleavy has played extremely big in this game so far. Here you'll see the tip in, no block out there because Randall had just come into the game, tried to double team down on the inside. He and Wilcox, nobody blocking out Dunleavy. And on the other end of the floor, Dunleavy has really been a terror on the defensive glass. Ewing in the game now, Jones sits down. And for Maryland, Taj Holden, number 45, makes his first appearance. You have to give advantage Maryland in terms of being able to come with size into the game off the bench. Maryland does have the advantage in depth. Ewing, the freshman, not there, and Blake with another rebound. Ahead to Dixon. Ewing, a terrific game the other night against NC State. Gives Mike Krzyzewski a Plenty of confidence coming off that bench at the guard spot. Duhan, an excellent defender, hawking Blake outside. Blake, back to Randall. Nice little give and go. Holden, Holden has great Blake. hands, Dick, on the inside. And now they've got kind of like the twin towers with Holden and Randall on in there together. Holden's first basket, it's 14 to 9. And one of the things that this also does for Gary Williams, it allows some fouls to be committed. Randall's going to sit down, a terrific job on his part. Gives Baxter not only a little rest, but keeps Boozer occupied. Boozer out, Horvath in. Mike Krzyzewski realizing what's happening early in this game and the fact that he's going to have to rest Boozer a little bit, the way that Maryland's going to rotate their big man. Good with three turnovers. Dixon tries Beautiful to feed feet. inside. Blocked. Followed by Holden, and the foul. Dick, last year in games against Duke, Holden was 5 for 10, 14 and 7 in one game, 2 for 2, 7 in another, 3 for 3, 10 in another. He played extremely well, and I'm sure Gary Williams recognized this. He made his mark in the outstanding performance against Stanford that led Maryland into the final four. Nick Horvath with his first foul, and at the line, Taj Holden, the 6'10 junior from Red Bank, New Jersey, a muscle guy inside, and yet he has the touch to hit the threes outside. Absolutely an excellent shooter. Doesn't mind taking that shot as well. Last year made 12 of 25 threes. And with 12 and a half minutes remaining in this opening half, Maryland back up by seven. Williams running on Blake and the rebound to Lonnie Baxter. Great job of moving his feet for Blake. Dixon, not there. Ewing skied for that rebound as a guard. Dunleavy has had the hot hand and a travel call. Just, he made his spin move and a hesitation trying to pass. Well, the Blue Devils second to the Jayhawks of Kansas and scoring power with TCU, Oregon, and Florida completing the top five. That's not unfamiliar territory for Duke University. There's the travel by Dixon. Turnover by Dixon with Williams on him. So far, Blake has just been outstanding defensively, both on Jason Williams. He's going to take, I thought he's going to take a little blow. He's, Dixon comes out, Mouton in. 
Blake, of course, uh, really gave Jason Williams a tough game until that last minute last year at this place when, actually, when Blake fouled out, that really enabled Duke University to come back and win the game. Dunleavy with Holden on him. He thinks he can take Holden off the dribble. Ewing and Mouton. Dunleavy. The freshman, Ewing. Ewing move. 16 to 11 as he has his first point. Daniel Ewing from Missouri City, Daniel Texas Ewing. near Houston. Played with TJ Ford, a freshman who's leading the nation in assists this year. It could be the Texas. first ever. Could you imagine that backcourt? <laughs> Two straight 5A Texas championships. Holden caught in midair. And here come Numbers. the Blue Devils. Dunleavy fires from three and hits again. It's 16-14 as Duke is uh, as close as they've been in this first half, led by Dunleavy, who leads all scorers with 10. 11.09 left, opening half. What would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? I'm out, man. Let's go. I'm out to see the world. San Francisco, here we go. Oh, Are we having fun yet? It doesn't take much to have fun, does it? <laughs> it's like riding on a surfboard. You're going to have to call me Dixie if I wear this. All right, Dixie. I can smell the salt water from here. Give us a swell, baby. So what would you do with the Pontiac Grand Prix? <laughs> Tell us at Pontiac.com. There's some good surf out there. Pass it along. Maryland's lead once eight is down to two. And let's take a look at the top three teams in the nation. Only six losses combined from those three teams. Ball State, a club that uh, obviously got Kansas off to that rocky start. That could have been considered goaltending. Jones was really up there. Questionable call. Dunleavy feeling it, leading all scores. Jason Williams uh, being given a breather at the moment as Dunleavy a little off balance this time. Mouton is fouled by Dante Jones. What Dunleavy feels right now is that Holden is not quick to, enough to stay with him in the half court. So he's looking for his shot. Williams arguing for the goaltend as we take a timeout. doesn't own you. Your bank doesn't own you. Out here, nobody owns you. But you. Head for the mountains of Bush. It was named most beautiful car in the world by the Italian press and best value in its class by strategic vision. And after outselling the Mercedes C-Class all summer, it's ready to take on winter. The Volvo S60, available now with all-wheel drive. It adheres to everything but convention. This week on The Late Show, Dave's mom returns to the Olympics. Hi, David. Monday, it's an all-new update from Salt Lake City. Plus, snowboarding gold medalist Ross Powers, Monday. 
Welcome to Cole Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Maryland. There again is that graphic. Duke lo losing to Florida State by one. Ball State leads their division of the MAC. UCLA a top team. Maryland losing to three top ten teams. How about that? Ball State has beaten both Kansas and UCLA, so obviously sets them well. And Dick, when you think about stats about this program that Duke has, in the last 22 games, they've played against teams where both of them were in the top 10. Duke has won 18. 18 of 22 games against that kind of competition. And there's a defensive play by the Blue Devils and a chance to tie or take the lead. Ewing for three. Boozer can't quite get there. Boxed out by Wilcox. I thought that Blake might get a piece of that ball, but Ewing really had the presence of mind to get his shot off. Drew Nicholas hits his first attempt. A three-pointer for Nicholas, and it's 19-14. Through Nicholas for three. We're at the midpoint of this first 20-minute period at the University of Maryland. Nicholas, another guy, can get extremely hot off the board. There's Wilcox. Oh, he can Man slide. among boys right there, way over the top of everybody. Just a sophomore. Let's see if Maryland starts getting that ball inside to Baxter. I think they have to make Boozer work defensively. There Wilcox it is. Wilcox to Baxter. Boozer gave up on Baxter. I'm really surprised. He cannot afford to double down on Wilcox as good as Baxter moves without the ball. First points for Lonnie Baxter. Batted away and stolen. Nicholas comes up with it. Blake, such a sure-handed ball. Handler sets up move time with a beautiful pass. And it's the biggest Maryland lead. 23-14 timeout Duke. Great job by Maryland forcing the tempo of this game with a deeper bench, particularly in the power position. There's the double down. It won't work with Baxter. Uh-oh. They're all down. Mm-hmm. What happens? The whole team down at once? That's infrastructure. Well, what do we do? Just watch. Ladies and gentlemen, back up and Miracle. No miracle. But close. Maryland fans in the student body, some uh, six, 7,000. They won't take a seat the entire game. Cheering a 7-0 Terrapin run in the last minute and 20 seconds after Duke had pulled within two. Interesting, last year, Dick, Maryland had in all four games a double-digit lead at some point in all four of those games, even though they dropped three of them. 22-point lead in the first half, remember, in the national Absolutely. semifinals. Walk-in. Jason Williams tries to turn the corner, can't make it. The other thing, the old axiom, teams that like to press don't like to be pressed. How about teams that like to run might not like to be run on? And Maryland is certainly getting the ball up the court on Duke the way Duke normally does to other opponents. And characteristic start for Mike Krzyzewski's the Blue Devils with seven turnovers. And uh, Krzyzewski in conversation with one of the officials. Now what he's wanting to talk about is let's get somebody out there to wipe up that spot on the floor. It's on Mike's half court in regard to his half court offense. So he wants to make sure his players have an opportunity. There is no coach in the college game that works officials the way Mike Krzyzewski does. In this particular case, a realistic request. And Gary Williams knows that. And believe me, he's going to get right out in their face as well. He's working in the other <laughs> official. Here are two men who played uh, college ball at the same time in the late 60s. Williams, the captain of the Maryland team. And, of course, Krzyzewski was captain at uh, West Point in his playing days. Well, a few years ago, Gary was ejected down in Durham. So he knows exactly what match and wits is with that guy down on the other bench. Open is Dixon, passes up the three as Dante Jones on him. Takes it to the hole. Won't fall. Williams of Duke touched it last. Give. The NCAA Give tournament is right around the corner, Billy. And uh, where will the teams be seated? Check out projecting the seats at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Very seldom is Dixon matched up against a bigger man that's as quick as he is. And that's why it's so much fun to watch him try to go ahead and use his pump fakes against Jones. Jones listed at 6'6", and uh, Dixon at 6'3", and it goes off Dixon out of bounds to Duke. Great defensive job. That is some matchup to watch. Dixon is going to have to go ahead and realize. Now, 
Shane Battier was the National Defender of the Year, but he wouldn't have been able to switch out and play at Dixon. So Duke actually is better this year on that kind of defensive position, but nowhere near as good when they had Battier on the inside. Dunleavy has been the one successful Duke shooter, four for eight from the floor. The rest of the Devil team off the opening bell, two for 13 from the floor. If I was going to give any advantage to Duke in this game where Maryland has that big advantage of power, it would be that Maryland has no answer defensively unless they're going to put Mouton on Dunleavy for somebody that can handle him. And if they try to go with Mouton, expect Dunleavy to move inside and post him up. Dunleavy unable to connect on his 11th point. There's his father, Mike, who played at South Carolina and coached the, in the NBA with the Lakers and Portland and Milwaukee. In fact, uh, Dunleavy told me before the game today, I said, of all the uh, pro players that you had contact with, who was nicest to you? He said, oh, that's easy. Magic Johnson. That figure, didn't it? Magic's <laughs> nice to everybody. Jason Williams hawking Mouton. Mouton will not take him inside because obviously Maryland doesn't want to waste Baxter and, and Wilcox's position. Boy, Baxter with a good save on an Aaron throw. From the corner, the three-pointer by Mouton not there. And it's out of bounds to Maryland. Horvath has come back in for the Blue Devils as a Boozer being given yet another breather here in the first it's half. Kind of, kind of interesting. Horvath is getting the, the first playing time as the sub of big men inside. He has really struggled with his year off last year due to injury. I think Mike Krzyzewski is giving him all the opportunities he can through the month of January and February, knowing in March he can go back to Sanders if he has to. Wilcox misses, but Mouton there to wrap home the rebound. And he now has eight to lead Maryland. And there's the advantage Mouton has if he goes inside. But as I said, they're trying to keep the space open. Boy, this has been a long dry spell for Duke. Duhan. Out of bounds to whom? No, the officials look at each other at uh, the call, and I think the correct one is Duke's ball. This Maryland team had 15 blocks, one away from their all-time high this year against Norfolk State. Their all-time high is 16, so they can go up for and get them. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, New car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430, at your Lexus dealer. Listen up. We brought in a very special consultant to help us with our fundamentals. This is a triangle. Triangle. What's this? Triangle. What's this? Triangle. What's this? The bill. What'd that cost? Four million dollars. And he's not going to stick around to see if it works? Rapunzel, my cupcake. Does I love a boy? Wait a moment, darling. I'll just let my hair down. <laughs> Ooh, ah, too short by a hair's breadth. Then you'll just have to wait for my hair to grow. What? I'll have gone bald by then. Well, hair today, gone tomorrow. All you need is a red bull. <laughs> Why? Because red bull gives you wings. Yes, but it also stimulates the mind. So get downstairs and open the blooming door. Check this out. Bob here needs a car. Whoa. Uh, how about a pickup? Uh, a black one. With a place for my bike. Autotrader.com. Over a million and a half used cars make it the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Need a loan? Oh, yeah. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. Back at the University of Maryland as the Terrapins enjoy their largest lead. And other than Mike Dunleavy, Billy Packer, the Duke Blue Devils are icy. 
Well, they really are, and you can see this field goal shooting percentage by Duke is woeful. They really haven't had, they got good looks about the first four or five minutes of the game. Since that time, only Dunleavy's been able to get himself open. There's been no inside presence whatsoever because Wilcox and Baxter have really taken up the space. Blake doing a real good job cutting down on penetration. Terrific job defensively by Maryland so far in the first half. And by the way, Baxter is blocked. That was his 200th career block here at Maryland. He's led them the last three seasons and a foul inside. That's Randall on over the top of Horvath. Probably not a good foul by Randall whatsoever. Lack of experience right there because what has Horvath shown that he could do with the ball if he got it in low? Who's a return? Horvath on. There's the steal by Wilcox. Hello. And there you see the tremendous quickness he has. A lazy pass. Wilcox, long and lean, but extremely quick for a man his size. Eight points for Chris Wilcox. And that happens by 13. And now five games, Maryland with those double-digit leads. Dunleavy from three-point range. Not there, but Boozer comes up with it. Good for recovery Duke. by Mouton. Nothing inside so far for Boozer. Duhan for three. Chris Duhan has his first basket of the game. That change of assignments where Jason Williams has to go find Mouton. Mouton's breaking on that break. Tough matchup for Williams to get back there. Wilcox, little jump hook, and Dunleavy brings it back the other way for Duke. He's got Williams behind him for the jump shot. Another steal, steal by Wilcox, and it's off to Mouton, two on one with Blake. Takes it himself. Followed by Randall, Ryan Randall. It is, it is amazing, Dick. This almost reminds me of last year's semifinal game. Maryland totally in a dominant position, beating Duke up and down the floor on both ends. Nothing there for Boozer at all inside. And again, Gary Williams able to use Randall. One field goal for Duke in the last five minutes of this game, and we're down to the six-minute mark with the Terrapins leading by 12. And remember this, in the last five games, great cut by Dixon. In the last five games, he gets called for the charge. The team that was ahead at halftime lost the basketball game. That's a very interesting point. The teams ahead at halftime, last five in a row, have lost the game. A reminder next Saturday, here's your lineup. Arkansas, Kentucky, Navy, Army early, then Florida, and number seven, Alabama. Boy, what a fight that'll be in the SEC. And then UCLA, Stanford will cap off our triple hitter. The SEC topsy-turvy with so many teams, maybe and the first eight-bid conference in NCAA tournament history. Williams can't hit. And the leading score for Duke has not had a good first half, one for five, but uh, he has been able to turn things around time and time again in his career with a great second half. Well, he's going to have to turn it around against a guy that's played him as well defensively as anybody in the country, Steve Blake. Baxter. Steps. Not where he really wants to be, but you can see Dixon now trying to go inside and post up. Maryland's got the, a lot of weapons. And a tough matchup inside for Duke. Well, in part because Gary Williams can bring four very big, talented men to play down in the box. Whereas Boozer really is the only muscle guy for Duke. Good overplay by Dixon. Not allowing Duke to get in any flow whatsoever in his first half. See if Williams tries to take him off the dribble. Great hedge move that time by Baxter. And Duhan for three. Over the top, out of bounds to Maryland. Now Jason Williams has got to figure out what's happening to him right now. They're hedging on every time that he puts the ball on the floor. Blake, who handles him pretty well on that crossover anyway, is getting a half a man help. Jason's going to have to go ahead and split that double and go down the middle. Mouton to Baxter. Dixon now draws Jason Williams. Pulls up and hits. Oh, that was a tough. Four for one, Dixon. So Dixon with four, the leading score for Maryland, and Williams with two, leading Duke. And the two stars not uh, getting on that stat sheet. You see that hedge move every time you, they're getting being played by a half a man. Ewing that time put it up quickly. Good defensive play by Maryland against this Duke penetration that they normally are able to get inside. Ewing with five to match the number on his jersey. Dixon wants Jason Williams. Boozer comes out. Dixon 
And the foul, that's the second straight charge on Juan Dixon. Boy, he really needed to pull up and take his jump shot. He wants Summer Williams, who's guarding him now in the matchup defensively, goes right by him. He had to pull up and take a little half jumper there. Dunleavy moving quickly to take his path away. No question about the call, Dick. And what's happening is when Dixon commits himself from, say, 18 feet, obviously Duke playing weak side defense, going to be waiting on him. 12 through Nicholson, 45, Todd Tobin. There it is. Williams Good block. Blocked by Baxter. Three Great on job. two. Blake pulls up. Mouton spins. And Holden is fouled as he tries to put. The fresher, bigger team is Maryland in this game. And you can see the great block down here, Jason Williams, who much like was the case with Dixon, committed from about 18 feet. Now Baxter takes a little rest here, but Holden, who is fresh, is not taking a rest. Look at him busting down court for the follow-up. And Holden hits the free throw as he's three for three from the line. Uh, 46% outside shooter and a solid uh, contributor from the free throw line four in a row today back to a 33 20 lead maryland the bow resistance becomes strength becomes power the power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire jam in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real, the results are real, and you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. <laughs> Can you say ha ha? Ha ha! ha! Oh, this is unbelievable. Please hold for ha! Never pay for long distance again with Singular Wireless. And now for March Madness, get 3,500 night and weekend bonus minutes plus a great deal on a Nokia phone. Welcome to nationwide self expression. <laughs> My hands speak to me. They tell me secrets. They tell me of time and patience. At least, that is what my hands say. The all-new Lexus ES300. A new world of luxury. Last year in winning the national championship, Duke is the first team in college history to take a thousand fouls and a thousand threes. It's not just shooting the threes, but yesterday on this court, Maryland put a line out here beyond the three because they know that Duke will spot up way here. Now watch what happens as they take the defense and extend it. Now what this does, what this does is it forces spacing by the defensive team that normally Duke takes great advantage of. But so far today, they're four for 14 from three. So consequently, that spacing that Maryland would normally have to go out and challenge him for the deep threes has not had to take place. And Maryland has really taken advantage of it with their hedge moves and double teams inside on the dribble. Jason Williams slips again. And Ewing waits for the defender to fly by, and the tip in is by Nick Horvath, who has his first basket. That's stealing two. Gary Williams really upset with that because he wants a block out. He sends Wilcox right back in there. If Maryland's going to be dominant in any area, it has to be off the glass. Into Baxter. Great rebound by Jason Williams. Listed at 6-3, up high to pull that one down. He has not yet figured out how to get his shots off against Blake, though. Newhan Bad is short. Shot. Bad shot under the circumstances. Blake has another rebound. 
Dick, when you're down like that, particularly with Jason Williams cold so far in this game, it's Duhon's job to figure out how to get his backcourt teammate into the game offensively. Blake with 15 on the shot clock, caught in midair, but gets it off to Nicholas for three. Rattles out and out of bounds to Duke. Now here's where you're stealing points if you're Duke University. Gary Williams has to be upset with that. Horvath, who has not been doing anything <laughs> offensively, steps inside with no body on him and puts one back down inside. Maryland leads by 11 with the 240 remaining in the half. Going to Horvath against Wilcox seems like a normal mismatch and is. Meanwhile, Jason Williams with only two points, the leading scorer for the Duke Blue Devils. Boozer with a drive and score. Good job by Boozer to shield Our Wilcox off, but you can see what happens. Wilcox and Baxter waiting for weak side help for shot blocking ability. So Carlos Boozer finally with his first basket, and he's been red hot here the last three weeks. Batted around, and it goes to Wilcox. Partially blocked and cleared by Boozer to Williams. Look out for Wilcox on a block. And it's going to be against Blake of Maryland. Without question, Blake did not get there on the spot. Here's Boozer, makes the move, but look at Wilcox. Because he followed Horvath out, and probably should not have, when he followed Horvath out, that gave Boozer all the room he needed to take it to the basket. If you're Wilcox, and here you see Jason Williams slipping once again a little bit. Blake gets underneath him, no question, the foul on Blake. Both teams now in the bonus, and uh, Williams looks for his third point. He's a junior, he will complete all of his academic requirements uh, at summer school this year, and then go on uh, to play in the National Basketball Association, and undoubtedly uh, a heavy favorite to be named College Basketball Player of the Year. Not a Not, great free throw shooter. No, he really isn't, and it's really hard to believe. Last year, Jason shot 65.8%, and this year 65.8%. And everybody remember their only loss. He was 0 for 6 against Florida State. Dixon misses. And Maryland's 14 point lead has been whittled to 8, and here's another chance for Duke. Ewing is a guy that looks like he wants shots. Beautiful. What a pass to Boozer as he sets up big Carlos Boozer for his fourth point. I love Ewing's confidence in this game, Dick. Made an incredible behind-the-back pass against State the other night. Young man looking for playing time. A minute 37 seconds left in this opening half. Maryland by six. In and out. Good. Keep the victim calm. And one and two and three. Okay, there you go. It's over 130 channels, sports, news, entertainment, even your local channels, and it's only $39.99 a month. Just $39.99 a month, over 130 channels of DirecTV programming, even your local ones. Now get a DirecTV system for $49 or less, installed. So it was the digital music that... Yeah. Yeah. Coach Krzyzewski's Blue Devils with a 7-0 run the last two minutes to pull within six. Down to the final minute and a half of this opening half. Wilcox, spin move, and almost a steal, but the foul will be called on Ewing of Duke. Reminder, singular at the half coming up here on CBS. Tim Brando back in our studios in New York to bring you up to date on all the action on this Sunday. Plus, John Feinstein will take a look at the legacy of Lefty Drizel, the former Maryland coach, all coming up on singular at the half. We talk about these robberies, Dick. I don't know if there was ever a bigger one than the robberies back in the early 70s between Lefty Drizel's teams and North Carolina State with David Thompson and Burleson. Just incredible battles, and a matter of fact that probably the greatest that they ever had was the ACC tournament overtime game with uh, 103 to 101, 100. And that was a game that really changed the NCAA tournament as we know it today, because only one team from a given conference up to that point could go to the NCAA tournament. And after that, the changes were made for the better. Jason Williams can't hit the three. Mouton trying to get the rebound and does save it to Nicholas. He hurries the ball into the offensive end and too much in a hurry, throws it away to Williams. Three on one for Duke. And Williams finally able to bank in the short shot and he has five. That's Nicholas is a guy you want as the recipient of passes, not the guy leading the break in the middle. That's a big turnover for Maryland, one of the things that Duke takes advantage of. 
The Terrapins were ahead by 14, now lead by only five in the final minute of this first half. Lake, a rare attempt, and he kisses it off the glass. Not a good job by Duhon defensively that time. Steve Blake took him to school with a good shoulder and head fake. First points for Blake. Duke pulls it out. They look tired, don't they, Dick, at halftime here? One second differential, but Duke playing in, in essence for the final shot of the half. Solid screen, Blake Wilcox. Blake knows exactly what's coming up. Coach Gay says, hold up. Oh, he's in a And Williams caught looking at his coach, and Blake scores! Great oh, job. my! Great job by Steve Blake. Anticipation sensational. And what a momentum builder going into the locker room at halftime. Blake saw Williams looking back at Coach K and snuck in and stole it away for an easy two. Look at Blake's eyes when he saw Jason Williams turn his head and then takes it in on a tough layup against Jason Williams, who can sky sensational first half by Steve Blake. Nine-point lead with Dunleavy, top scorer for Duke in the first 20 minutes with 10. Wilcox at nine, and Mouton ships in with eight for the Terrapins. And again, a reminder, the team trailing at halftime in this series, the last five games, has succumbed to the team, uh, uh, has gone on to win the game. So if you're a historian, uh, Duke's sitting right where they want to be. What a first half. When did you get this? There's the, uh, yep. Look at the, uh, mm-hmm. There's nothing like a little variable valve timing to get people talking. What's that, uh, what, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Dipstick. Mm. The Accord V6 from Honda. Hey, sports fans, for all of your news, scores, expert analysis, and fantasy advice, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. The all-new Amazing Race premieres CBS Monday, March 11th. Let's go! In the 21st century, the vampire Lestat knows no fear. We are the powerful. Except one. Akasha. The mother of all vampires. Join me or die. She takes pleasure in only one thing. Aaliyah. Stuart Townsend. Destroying life. Anne Rice's Queen of the Damned. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Rated R starts this Friday. Technology inside, you can take Guinness Draft outside. Introducing Guinness Draft in a bottle. Hey, Boitano, LT, check it out. A dollar. So, what can you get for a buck these days? A phone call? Your autograph? Whoa, guys, wait. For just 99 cents, you can get great food. Like my new Big Cheeseburger. A big patty with two kinds of melting cheese for just 99 cents. Sal cow! <laughs> Carrie Pfeffer, Diana Sullivan. Weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. CBS Sports presents... Singular at the half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Welcome back to our New York studios in Singular at the half. We'd like to welcome all of you watching both Indiana, Michigan, as well as the matchup between Duke and Maryland. Let's go right to the college basketball scoreboard and get you up to date. Maryland really outplaying Duke in every way, particularly down low. They're up by nine right now. Mike Dunleavy. Trying to keep his team in it. Really the only Blue Devil that's been consistent. 
16-14 to score at that point. Then Wilcox finds Lonnie Baxter. This is the reason Maryland has confidence, because their low block can play with Duke, particularly with Boozer and Horvath not playing well this year. Blake then zips it down low to Byron Mouton, who seemingly always plays his best against the Dukies. And then Maryland's Chris Wilcox steals the ball at midcourt and takes it in. They led by as many as 13. It's now 38-29 at the break. Indiana and Michigan. Well, the Hoosiers struggled early, but have now been pulling away in the last few moments. Chris Young gets the ball down low, goes up strong, gets the hoop and the harm. Indiana's Dane Fife would then feed Jeff Newton underneath for the lay-in. Mike Davis's team just plays fundamentally sound, don't they? Indiana's Kyle Hornsby then will step out and knock down the tray. 18-10 at that point, and then Fife again will spot up. He knows how to square his shoulders. And he gets it done in a very big way. So not a good start either for Mike Krzyzewski or his former assistant Tommy Amaker. 38-27 to score at the break. Miami and Rutgers. Well, the Scarlet Knights beat Notre Dame earlier this week. Hey, the rack is rollicking again. Miami's John Simmons, little stop and go and the kiss. But it's 33-32, Rutgers still leading. Jerome Coleman will nail his fifth three-pointer. This makes it 40-32. He has had an unbelievable half, a tremendous week as well. Sherrod comes up with a steal, pushes it to Coleman, who lays it in. Coleman again, another three-pointer to close it out. In all, 8 of 16 from downtown for him. And Perry Clark's club is now down by 9 with 1.49 to play in the second half. A singular wireless celebrates the self-expression of college basketball fans everywhere, including these Maryland Rooters displaying some artistic turpitude. If you think you're more expressive than these fans, enter Singular's most expressive fan promotion by logging on to Singular.com. And we remind you that coming up next here on CBS Live, final round coverage of the Nissan Open. For an update on the action at Riviera, let's go out to Jim Nance. All right, Tim Brando, Riviera, damp and overcast for the final round, but what a prelude to round four we enjoyed on Saturday with action like this. Charles Howell the third. That was a birdie at the 16th on his way to 64. He's one of the contenders here, as is Brad Faxon yesterday, an eagle at the 11th. Faxon, in fact, opened with an eagle today at the first. Big part of the story here. So too is Toru. Taniguchi from Nara, Japan. At the 16th, the shot of the day. And Taniguchi with 67 begins the final round one back. One behind this man, Scott McCarran out of UCLA for Eagle at 17. Scott McCarran dazzling the home crowd here at Riviera. Here's how they stand at this point. McCarron and Taniguchi tied at 14. Faxon and Sabatini won back. All the action coming up later. Let's go back to Chateau Brando. They're in New York. Timmy B. <laughs> All right, Jim, that's golf after basketball later today here on CBS. Right up there with Pauly, Rupp, and Cameron, Maryland's Cole Fieldhouse is one of the great college basketball arenas. Now, in its 47th and final season, it remains the only campus facility to have hosted two Final Fours, including Texas Western's historic upset of Kentucky in 1966. And when you think of Cole, you think of the man who prowled the sidelines there for 17 seasons. Author John Feinstein looks at the merry old soul of the one-time King of coal. 22 years ago, during a tense game between Georgetown and Maryland, John Thompson and Lefty Drizel stood almost toe-to-toe -to -toe at midcourt, screaming angrily at one another. As they separated, Thompson unleashed a profanity at Drizel that upset Lefty so much he refused to shake hands at game's end. Later that season, Georgetown and Maryland met again in the NCAA tournament. When Thompson was asked about the incident, he said he owed Drizel an apology. The next day at a press conference, someone asked Lefty if he accepted that apology. Of course I do, he said. Everybody knows, to err is human, to forgive divine. And I'm divine. He certainly is. Charles G. Drizel has coached at four places. Davidson, Maryland, James Madison, and Georgia State. And each time turned a going nowhere program into a big time winner. He's closing in on 800 victories and last year took Georgia State to 30 wins and a first round NCAA tournament upset of Wisconsin. When someone asked Lefty the next day about what it was like coaching at a mid-major, he barked, mid-major? We're not mid-major, we're major. Ask Wisconsin if we're major. 
I don't know what mid-major is. I ain't never been mid anything in my life. But, sadly, people tend to remember Lefty for those moments he'd rather forget. They remember he promised to make Maryland the UCLA of the East back in 1969. And even though he turned Maryland into a national power, there were no Final Fours. They remember the tragic cocaine-induced death of Len Bias in June of 1986. They remember Dean Smith toying with him in so many big games. They forget that he turned this old building into one of the great places to be in college basketball, flashing the V sign every time he walked out of this tunnel. They forget that he was the first coach to beat Dean in the Dean Dome and got off one of the great lines ever to describe his arch rival. Talking about Dean's penchant for poor mouthing his players, Lefty once said, Dean Smith's the only man in history won 800 games, and been the underdog in every one of them. Some find it sad that one of sports' great characters now coaches in a tiny third floor gym on a commuter campus in downtown Atlanta. They miss the point. Lefty is doing the same things now that he did here at Maryland when he was constantly in the national spotlight. He's coaching, competing, blustering, and loving it all. He turned 70 on Christmas Day, a few months after signing a three-year contract extension. So consider this. If Lefty coaches four more seasons, he may very well get to Dean Smith's all-time record of 879 coaching victories before Bob Knight does. Lefty says that'll never happen. Why not? Because if I ever got close, Dean would come back. He's probably right. Again. <laughs> Will we see the left-hander bring Georgia State back to the NCAA tournament this year? That remains to be seen. And we'll know for sure three weeks from today when CBS Sports exclusively brings you the NCAA selection show. Meantime, next Saturday, the road to the Final Four continues with a triple hitter highlighted by an SEC battle at 2 p.m. between number six Florida and number seven Alabama. And at 4 p.m., a Pac-10 showdown between UCLA and number 12 Stanford. Thanks for watching Singular at the Half. We'll send you out courtside for the second half right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hey, guys. Never pay for long distance again with Singular Wireless. And right now, get 3,500 night and weekend bonus minutes, plus a great deal on a Nokia phone. Nationwide self-expression is singular. Hey, what do you think of this new Pontiac? Live GT. That's pretty cool. Why are you playing guitar in front of the car? The amp plugs into the car. It's got a oh, wow, that's cool. It plugs right in there. Oh. My band could go on tour in this because we could just plug in. Did you play guitar? I play drums. Uh, can you do a drum beat on the car? Meet the new Pontiac Vibe. Thank you. <laughs> Duke is a place of outrageous ambitions. Duke! Almost overnight, the University of Maryland has arrived. And now that we're here, we're getting out there in big ways. Today, we're the team leader on a NASA mission to study the heart of a comet. We just opened a dazzling new performing arts center. The grade point average of incoming freshmen has grown from 3.0 to 3.76. And then there's the basketball thing, which makes all of us wonder, what's next month going to be like? Hey, I'm John Stewart with an unbelievable announcement. This year, the entertainment industry has decided to give awards to musicians. CBS Wednesday, February 27th. The greatest music stars in the world will appear in the most unforgettable Grammys ever. I think it's going to catch on. One stage, one incredible night, live. John Stewart hosts the Grammys. CBS Wednesday, February 27th. I'm going to be there. It's contractually obligated. 
As we get ready for the second half, the nine-point Maryland lead represents the biggest deficit Duke has faced at halftime all season, Billy. Well, here we see a situation where Steve Blake, who had a sensational first half, is over here telling Wilcox, now here's the play that Duke wants to run. Watch him turn his head, tell Duke, Wilcox, here's what Duke wants to do. Jason Williams, meantime, turns around to go to Mike Krzyzewski, and what happens? Steve Blake, who had a first half of four points, six rebounds, six assists, no turnovers, and here is his second steal for the layup. Really has his head into the game beautiful. A huge uh, emotional lift for Maryland going into the locker room. Second half coming up. Men think about sports every day of the year. Men think about women every 5.3 seconds. Men think about soap? Probably never, because they're all the same. Except this one. It's new high endurance deodorant soap from Old Spice, with scents made just for guys. So you won't smell like a bunch of wildflowers all day. Maybe now women will think about you every 5.3 seconds. Look, if you try it and you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you some of your old stuff. Guaranteed. New high endurance deodorant soap. It's time to go back to the beach. Survivor style. Now meet the new survivors. Pascal, the superior court judge. People are going to underestimate me. Sarah, the account manager. Dirt and bugs and stuff doesn't bother me and I can rough it out. Survivor premieres CBS Thursday, February 28th. Catch every game of the first three rounds in their entirety with Mega March Madness as DirecTV supplements CBS's coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Catch Jag, Tuesday on CBS. It's all here. Thanks to the technology inside, you can take Guinness Draft outside. Introducing Guinness Draft in a Bottle. This new year, there's always somewhere you need to be. And Chevy wants to take you there. That's why we're kicking it into overdrive with $2,002 cash back on every new 2001 and 2002 Chevy car. From Malibu to Impala, Corvette to Monte Carlo. That's $2,002 cash back when you lease or purchase any new Chevy car. So drive into this year with a car that you can depend on. See your Valley Chevy dealer today. KPHOTV5.com. Just click on it. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. New high endurance bar soap from Old Spice. And by Mountain Dew. Take it up a notch. No, make that two. Ready for the second half. Same teams that started Mouton, Dixon, Blake, Baxter, Wilcox for Maryland. It's uh, Duhan, Williams, Jones, Dunleavy, and Boozer for Duke. Jason Williams setting up down on the baseline, trying to get free of Blake. Duhan up the alley. Tipped by Boozer and controlled by Baxter. Nice job by Baxter not to go over Boozer's back. You can see right away Duke is going to try to get Jason Williams started. Duke was 4 for 17 from 3 in the first half. Only 1 for 4 from the foul line. A place that they are usually on early. Duke is not led in the game. Closest was 16-14. Maryland's biggest lead, 14, and they open up with a basket early here, an 11-point advantage at 40-29. Nice. Four points for Baxter. Nice patient move that time inside by Wilcox. A terrific job on that pass. J. 
Jason Williams, the trigger man to Dunleavy, leads all scorers in the first half with 10. Jason Williams back to Dunleavy, stolen by Dixon. No numbers there. Back to Blake. Oh, he does handle the ball. That was a tough pass. Probably not a good shot, though. Just gave up a possession on that particular play. He is causing all kinds of problems for Jason Williams, knowing when to go out and jump on it. Dunleavy from way outside, and Baxter hauls in the rebound. He had six in the first half. Because Jason Williams can't get penetration, Duke is really having a hard time getting the kind of looks they like from three. Mouton's pass stolen by Dunleavy, who sets up Dante Jones, and the block by Dixon. Dixon at only 6-3, skying high to deny. First half statistics, uh, neither team shooting well from outside. Rebounds a plus four for Maryland. Maryland's 19-0 when they shoot a better percentage than their opponent. So that speaks well for them what they did in the first half. Good overplay by Blake, not letting Williams touch the ball. Boozer sets up Duhan. One of the Duhan few, with five. One of the few dick breakdowns we've seen in the half court defense by Maryland today. Blake with the ball, didn't score the entire first half, then got the last two baskets, one on that clever steal as Williams caught looking back at his coach. Picks it up the alley and sets up Baxter. Beautiful job by Baxter to beat Tayshon. Blake, we talked about Dixon, we talked about Williams, but today the guard on this court has been Blake. Both ends of the floor. Boozer has it stripped and taken away by Mouton. A lot of quick hands in the paint for Maryland. Teams really match up well, and what's good to see if you're a Maryland fan is that despite the fact that Duke had their number last year and beat them this year, quite convincingly in Durham. This team thinks they can beat the Blue Devils. Wilcox unable to connect. Dunleavy the rebound. Duhon brings it in. And a 30-second timeout. Boy, that's a quick timeout well, by Mike Krzyzewski. Mike Krzyzewski has got to figure out a way to get Williams in the offense. We play just uh, two minutes and 40 seconds of the second half. Chevy Trailblazer. Everything else just seems kind of weak. The 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. Pizza! In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese. Even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... Well, so I get Pepto-Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. ways which brings us to the safety triangle the interconnected parts that enable you to stop steer and maintain stability ask your mechanic for a safety triangle inspection and quality replacement parts like monroe reflex and sensor track shocks and struts dennis listen got a little advertising opportunity for you pally uh foot powder yeah foot powder right forget about it well before you say that it, it's a truckload of money Sam, I don't do commercials, period. Hey, you preach it to the choir, I told them that. Know why I don't do commercials? Why's that, pal? Because they're dishonest, they lie. Boy, that's strong language, I don't... I'm supposed to peddle some product I don't even use. Forget about it, I'm not gonna do it. I wouldn't let you do it. You better believe it. It's the 10th hole at Riviera, 315-yard par four. Do you go for it off the tee? I know I would. The Nissan opens on CBS. You got to get it. Back at Cole Fieldhouse, and it's a final month of activity. They'll move to the new Comcast Center, uh, 3,000 more seats next year. Great tradition is John Feinstein and his halftime piece. Well, they'll end this uh, arena with 84 straight non-conference wins. Hoosier not ready to make the catch and put it in, but luckily, 
Maybe because of the bobble, picks up a foul. Otherwise, he got a clean layup. Baxter with a foul and a chance for the three-point play for Carlos Boozer. You'll notice on the, the flub of the pass here by Baxter, it was just enough time for Boozer. Boozer will flub the pass. And watch Baxter. He was in position. Had it been a clean layup, he wouldn't have committed the foul. And another miss from the free throw line. So it's 42-33. Maryland by nine with three minutes going second half. Boozer loves to live on that foul line. Even though not a great free throw shooting team, they're on there so often, they usually dominate. Put back by Chris Wilcox, who leads Maryland in scoring. He now has 11. Unless Duke gets Jason Williams open on some clear outs, Maryland will dominate this game because they have better players inside. Williams gets the bounce, and it's 44-35, seven for Jason Williams. Line pass on Wilcox, athletic move to the hole. How about that catch in traffic by Wilcox? Presence of mind to lay it up above everybody. Leads all scorers, Chris Wilcox, the sophomore now with 13. Williams fires way off the mark. Mouton with a rebound. And the cry of air ball from the Maryland student body. Dick, one of the things I think that Duke could do with Williams is not to have solid screens because he's being double teamed on that hedge move. He'd be better off almost with a clear out and see if he can take Blake one and one. Boy, Dixon, did he fire from the hip in a hurry? He gets the three, and he now is seven. Down 14. Inside to Boozer. Back to Dunleavy. Wilcox on him. Basically, the game is broken down for Duke of one-on-one -on -one moves. See, there's that hedge move. Williams can't get it off because Blake recovers so quickly. Blake harassing Williams from the opening tip. Duhan inside. Nothing no whistle. Great defense. I have never seen Duke in a game of this consequence break down offensively to the point that each guy is operating on his own island. And they love it in Maryland, the Terps by 14. This is Silverado Heavy Duty. Available with the Duramax diesel. The most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. The number one music event of the year, the Grammys, live, CBS Wednesday, February 27th. Look through the eyes of the Hawk. News Hawk 5, bringing you closer. This close to the story. To the story. News Hawk 5, a state-of-the-art electronic news gathering machine with a gyro-stabilized bold camera, magnifying images 72 times, digital capability, three onboard GPS receivers, manned by two generations of pilots, more aviation experience than any other news crew in the valley. News Hawk 5, only on KBHO TV 5 News. In the 21st century, the vampire Lestat knows no fear. We are the powerful. Except one, Akasha, the mother of all vampires. Join me or die. She takes pleasure in only one thing. Aaliyah, Stuart Townsend. Destroying a life. Anne Rice's Queen of the Damned, directed by Michael Reimer. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Rated R starts this Friday. Hey, Phoenix, don't miss the gigantic truck sell-off liquidation sales event now. now at Trucks Only in Mesa. 0% financing has created an oversupply of hundreds of quality pre-owned trucks at incredible prices. Pickups, SUVs, 4x4s, vans, all must be sold now. now. Liquidation fees starting at only $49 with monthly payments as low as $99. Don't wait. Don't, don't, don't go anywhere else. Don't miss the Trucks Only liquidation. Trucks sell-off at Trucks Only in Mesa. Wayne Garcia, Elizabeth Sanchez, the team to watch at 5.30. Give credit to Maryland's defense, Dick, but watch Duke's players. They're all spectators on this court right now. A one-on-one -on -one move and four men just standing around watching one man try to take his play on the island. Nobody there to rebound. Duke University in a total funk here and give Maryland a lot of credit 
their defense has really cut off the penetration of Williams. And they've matched their largest lead of the game, 14 points, plenty of time. 15 and change remaining in the second half. Double teaming Luton. Over to Lane Star, and it's an offensive foul. Used the offhand to That's shield the, off the defender. He certainly did. That's the first time it seemed like Dixon went ahead and, and took on a personal challenge. Here at the University of Maryland, the number one team in the nation, Duke. Number three, Maryland. Maryland with a chance to take the lead in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Each Maryland team with only one conference on. loss. And Maryland very impressive with a 14-point lead over the Blue Devils. Duhon inside, can't hit. Boozer battling with Mouton, and he saves it to Blake. And Duhon was worried about the shot blocking on the inside. Blake, the first time he's turned over the ball today. Jason Williams then to Boozer at the other end, and it's 49-37. Six points for Carlos Boozer. Boozer's held in check. Jason Williams, a big story, is the number one scorer for the Duke Blue Devils. Three for ten shooting, seven total points in the game. Mouton, an easy bank. Over Dante Jones. He has had the better of that matchup. Jones just switches over on Dixon when they're on the other end of the floor. Mouton, a good solid game, particularly on the offensive end. Jason Williams, nothing there. Duke has never led in the game. A three-on-one breakout. Blake can't hit, but Wilcox there to jam home the rebound. Baxter was able to stay back. The shot blocking or the threat of shot blocking by Baxter and Wilcox really thrown off the Duke penetration. Dante Jones inside, doesn't get the bounce. Rebound to Wilcox, who leads all scorers with 15. That's the third shot that has been altered in the last four possessions by Wilcox and Baxter. Steve Blake has been outstanding, the point guard for Maryland. Had the last four points of the first half to spark Maryland. He fires from three. Wilcox up high to give Maryland another chance. And remember, the minutes that, that Holden and Randall were able to play keeps Wilcox and Baxter a lot fresher than Boozer and Dunleavy. Wilcox one rebound away from a double-double. Baxter outside. Takes it inside for the scoop and a foul against Duke. Here we see a break. Nicholas does a good job. A nice layup. But here comes Wilcox to make sure it finishes off. That what you like about Wilcox, you would just assume, Dick, that he's going to make that layup. So you take it easy. Instead, Wilcox came right to the basket and kept right on working. See him come down inside, get that position. Fourth Terrific man on job. the break. Fourth yep. man down. Baxter, not a good free throw shooter at the line, trying to collect his seventh point of the game. Not the only thing that Baxter does not do well. He's got 30 career double-doubles. When the game is over, he's the kind of player you figure did not do much. Then you look down, he's got 16 points, 11 rebounds. Gets the second as Mike Krzyzewski takes out both Jason Williams and Carlos Boozer. Nick Horvath then as the big man in the post. And Baxter's not even going to guard Horvath. See, he's playing a one-man zone down inside. Good move. Dante Jones pulls up for the jumper and connects. He has his first basket of the game. That was a mistake by Mouton trying to double down on Horvath. You got to figure that Baxter can handle Horvath by himself. He allowed the open shot for Jones by going in there to help out. Ooh, almost a blind pass and a, a good job done by, by the Maryland Terrapins to maintain their control. As, uh, Showed you what a great Nicholas. soft bounce pass that was. Mouton. He's the one that got Maryland kick-started in the opening of the game, and he now has a dozen. Mouton only had six points in that first Duke game, but playing extremely well today. Jones and Blake steals it. No foul, and Blake to the other end. Shouldn't have been a foul. Good clean play by Blake, who is putting on quite a show here today. They're going crazy in the Maryland student section. Look at that sea of red. As they celebrate a 19-point lead, Dunleavy blocked by Mouton. They're going to call a foul on the play. Blake, who last year set an assist record here at Maryland and is working 
on becoming the all-time career assist leader as well. He's got 10 today, Billy, so he needs only four, four more. more to yep. pass Keith Gatlin. School record of 649, and Blake will do it in three years. He's only a junior out of Miami. You know, he even has an opportunity at the radius going to catch a Bobby Hurley or an Ed Cota for the ACC League. And the National League. Hurley is the all-time. The ACC actually has the top three all-time assist men career-wise in NCAA history. Well, if there's an Achilles for this Duke team on the season, although they've lost only one game, it's been at the free throw line. And as a team, they're shooting only 68%. Wilcox a standing ovation as he goes off. Duke has been averaging 29 free throw attempts per game this year. Today, they're one for six. One for seven as Baxter rebounds. A team of this caliber, you would assume, would eventually be bit by not shooting uh, free throws well. It hurt them in the Florida State game, and obviously hurt them today. Moves on with a great pass to Juan Dixon. And Dixon now with nine. He's just one point away from making it 42 straight games in double figures. Great job by the Maryland players staying on the floor. Jason Williams looking to pass rather than score. Totally confused. Another Duke turnover to the delight of these Maryland fans. I'm just not good with the ladies like you, Cedric. All right. Try this on her. Hi, I'm Paul. You have beautiful eyes. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Paul, and you have beautiful eyes. I'd love to take you out sometime. Love to take you out sometime. So how much? So how much? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. If someone wrote a book about your life, would anyone want to read it? The stories of tomorrow are being written today in the U.S. Navy. You'll do more in a few years than most people do in a lifetime. If you're ready, Check out the Life Accelerator at Navy.com. Navy, accelerate your life. Sometimes you feel like being dependable. Sometimes you just want to go for a drive. Okay, we'll give you guys 10 seconds. You know, it'd be a lot more fun if they had a better car. Chevy Impala. Need a breather from the Olympics? Tonight, 60 Minutes has a story you and everyone else will be talking about Monday morning. How do you find the truth? This is the only case you work on. When a suspect is convicted by the media. People are presumed innocent. CSI at a special time, CBS Thursday. CBA Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. U.S. Navy. Navy, accelerate your life. And by Sprint PCS, the clear alternative to cellular. Duke deficit, 21 points. They've never trailed by that much the entire season. Duke number one, Kansas two beat Baylor yesterday. Maryland three. If Maryland goes on and uh, continues this very impressive play against the number one team, who's number one next week? Well, I think you've got to move Kansas up to number one. Maryland goes to number two, and Dick finds themselves again in that situation. Number two. They've yeah. been two in 20 weeks throughout their uh, life. But uh, you'd have to like Kansas' situation. 13 points for the state left, but now it's 23-point lead as Dixon in double figures for the 42nd consecutive game for Maryland. And Duke has just not figured out how to play against this Maryland team. Everybody going one-on-one, -on -one, four men standing around, nothing in unison for Duke whatsoever. Mike Krzyzewski has to look at this and say, this is a team I do not recognize. Taj uh, Holden with that foul, as we remind you, the conclusion of today's game will select our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a grand tradition for over a quarter of a century. This is Daniel Ewing, the 18-year-old freshman.
freshman from Missouri City, Texas, and he falls into that pattern for Duke. They're one for nine, eight now, one for eight from the free throw line as Holden goes out. Well, I mentioned that Maryland is 19 and 0 when they shoot a higher percentage than their opponent. They're 32 and 0 when they commit fewer fouls than their opponent. And another miss. And a foul on the push-off by Carlos Boozer. This is just a remarkably stunning game by Maryland. And for Mike Krzyzewski, must be wondering, here we're averaging 92 points a game this year, losing only once, that by one at Florida State, and only 39 points scored. We played almost 30 minutes. And Dick, since their loss to Florida State, they've actually even been doing better than that. So this is really a turn of events. Yeah, every back wins. door cut. Beautiful pass, and Wilcox is followed by Boozer. Wilcox with that ability to stay in the air for a long time, and great hands that he has, even on the move. Third foul on Carlos Boozer. Part of the strategy for Gary Williams coming into this game, knowing that he had superior depth at the big man position down in the hole. He has four that he can play, was to try to get Boozer in foul trouble. Wilcox, as I said, was not a factor last year. But this young man is coming on so strong, and you really can envision by the time this season is over, will there be a better twosome inside than Baxter and Wilcox? I don't know about that. Collison and Gooden probably, but not many others. Wilcox with 17 to lead Maryland, plus 10 rebounds. A double-double for the sophomore. Ewing had the shot, should have taken it. Dunleavy is fouled by Wilcox over the back. That will send Mike Dunleavy to the line for a pair. Wilcox has his second foul. Well, Wilcox has proven to be more than a matchup than I expected for Dunleavy. Dunleavy took him outside early in the game, but what has really broken down for Duke is without Jason Williams getting any penetration, so that that Wilcox would have to help out inside. There have been no kickouts for wide open threes. There's the three-man punch for Duke, and all of them having trouble getting on the scoreboard. Dunleavy had 10 in the first half. That's his first point in the second half. Nine and a half minutes in, his dad watches. Well, they have the first, the third, and the fifth leading scorer in the ACC in this threesome. They're not getting it done today. 64-41. Wow! Are you kidding me? Dixon, with everybody watching in the Duke team, gets a full-court pass from Wilcox, he's showing us some versatility we saw yesterday in practice. Jason Williams, who has had trouble Jason scoring, finally Williams. gets two here in the second half, has nine for the game. No excuse for Duke to be beaten on a pass the length of the floor, as they just were. Bouton off to Nicholas, inside to Wilcox. He wants the ball. Absolutely. That's why, 19 for Wilcox. Yes. But maybe has no chance whatsoever to play him down in the low post. And Wilcox has proven to be pretty good outside defensively. Boozer with the left hand. One of the few times today we've seen Duke able to get the ball into Boozer down in the low post. Finally in double figures, Carlos Boozer, the junior from Juneau, Alaska. He has 10. I think Wilcox is getting a little tired right now. Oh, no. Well, there he is. He missed the easy <laughs> slam, and it comes all the way out to our position at midcourt. He was actually up too high. We'll see this right now. There is no excuse if you're a good basketball team to be beaten on a play like this. Ewing, the freshman, should have been back there for that pass. Some throw by the quarterback. Oh, that's perfect. Wow. Looked like Lynn Swan catching it. There's a block this time on Blake. His second foul. Team fouls, three on Duke, six now on Maryland, so the next Maryland whistle will send the Blue Devils to the line. I thought Gary Williams right now may give Wilcox a little bit of a rest. He's been working so hard out there. All he needs is a couple of minutes off. Dunleavy for three. Up high is Drew Nicholas, who at 6-3 gives you a lot of spring as well. Ewing got away with a foul, pushed Blake underneath the basket. Maryland much fresher in this game. Wilcox inside, denied for a moment, and then the foul. Boozer with the block. Might have been done oh. from the back side. I don't know if fans saw that, but he threw the ball over his head without looking at the basket, and it went in. Obviously did not count. Dunleavy has his third foul now. Everything going right for Wilcox.
Gosh. And they are taking a lot of Duke's confidence away in this. Here's Wilcox, gets blocked once, but comes right back, puts it up against against foul. Now watch this. That ball, fans, went in. He threw it right over his head without even looking. And Wilcox at the line looking for his 20th point. If he makes this free throw, it will be a career-high game for Chris Wilcox from Whiteville, North Carolina. He has the agility, as we've seen, at 6'10", to play outside, as does Dunleavy. And there it is, 20 for him, best ever in his two years here in Maryland, and a standing ovation for Wilcox. Great job by Gary Williams taking him out right now. You can tell he was getting a little tired. Needs about a two-minute blow, but they won't fall off much with Todd Golden coming in the game. And Dunleavy to the bench with his fourth foul. Isn't that amazing? Duke looks hesitant to take the three. Jason Williams, that's his first three-pointer of the game. Tennyson Pretty good ball rotation that time by Duke, but Ewing passed up a three, as did Duhon. Williams, who leads Duke in threes made and attempted. Finally, one for seven from outside the arc. Trying to post up Dixon down inside on Williams. Nicholas not there. Quick hands, and Duke wins the battle. Jason Williams brings it across the half-court line. Duhon for three. Good rebound by Boozer. Jason Williams, two in a row, and he can ignite in a hurry. Fans have seen that happen throughout the season, and suddenly Williams, who wasn't much of a factor offensively, has 15 for Duke. 69-51 as Gary Williams spends a 30-second timeout. Let's take a look at the next Dell tournament favorite, University of Massachusetts against Maryland. The second round of the 94 NCAA tournament. Joe Smith led the Terrapins with 22 points and five boards as Maryland advanced to the Sweet 16 in that 94 tournament, finally losing to the Michigan Wolverines. Joe Smith, the last Maryland player to have 40 points. Who did he have it against? Duke University. He and Lenny Bias had two great 40-point games. Bias with 41 and one of the great efforts ever seen in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Joe Smith, the great inside performer, had 40 against Duke as well. Duke pulling to within 18 with eight minutes to go. Remember a year ago with 54 seconds left, Duke made up a 10-point deficit. And boy, what is happening with Dixon going down the low post? Jason Williams really having to work down inside. And here Good comes steal. Williams, two straight threes, and then the behind-the-back pass to Ewing. And a little run here for the Duke Blue Devils. And, and a foul. Holden late getting there. Wilcox with that two-minute sit-down is coming right back in. And a reminder coming up next, final round coverage of the L.A. Nissan Open from the Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades, uh, California. You see McCarran and Taniguchi at last report sharing the lead. Brad Faxon putting together a great tournament. So stay tuned for the best in the world out there at the Riviera in Los Angeles. Dick, one of the things that's really important with this game as well, and I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but come March, which team will be in the south, which team in the east? because Kansas in the Midwest would play the East Regional winner if they get there. Email from home. Hello, Brian. Hi, Jennifer. Just writing to see how is the training going? Are you eating well? Introducing email so that talks to you. Are the people nice? I can't believe you made the ski team, ma'am. You are such a rock star. You must be working very hard. Conquer the mountain, dude. The mountain. The mountain. Talking email from Sprint PCS. Proud sponsor of things fast, new, and really quite amazing. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem in one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. 
and you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. For men, every morning it's the same routine. No work. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Finally, there's a better way to soothe your skin. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. What is wrong with you? Well, welcome back. Cole Fieldhouse, uh, Maryland enjoyed that 25-point lead, and just like that, uh, Jason Williams and company, they get red hot, 11 to one run. They've gone from 25 down to 15 down. There's time left. But Wilcox back in the game, and you'd have to figure that that was just a, a, a little change in action there. I really feel that the superior team from start right up to this point has been Maryland. I think they're gaining a lot of confidence as to how they've been able to handle Duke on the defensive end of the floor. I want to get you back to that number one seed business. Uh, Maryland and Duke apparently will both will earn number one seats. Kansas certainly will at this point. At least at this point. And the way things are set up is, is that the team in the East would play the team in the Midwest. Mean, in the uh, semifinals of the Final Four. So we could have had going into this week a number one Duke against a number two Kansas. And if they all the won out through yeah. the semifinals. Long way to go. And we certainly learned today that nobody is going to go ahead and vote their Duke way foul. through this NCAA tournament. Duke's oh, inbounds pass. This time to Wilcox. The last time Wilcox went full court as Duke was sleeping for a full court layup. Everything going wrong for the Blue Devils. Horvath with his back turned, not seeing the man, the ball, and the passer, and gives up an easy play. Wilcox having a sensational day. Horvath's third foul, the three-point play. Converted by Wilcox, who has 23 points and 11 rebounds and a career game for this young sophomore. And now, now what we're seeing Williams do is to get back to that crossover move and start challenging Blake. And what's helping him is Duke is not setting solid screens. He's kind of in a clear-out situation. Blake's third foul as Dunleavy off the bench returns for Duke and Horvath will be rested. You kind of get the fans a feeling, Dick, that the team of Maryland is confident, but the fans, knowing how Duke has come back so often, are, are still a little uncertain. Well, they were ahead by 22 in the national semifinals last year, and Duke wound up winning that game by 10. Uh, Maryland had it put away with a 10-point lead. 54 seconds left on this court just a year ago in regular season, and somehow Duke behind Williams tied it and won by two in overtime. So their uh, history makes them a little nervous. And if you're Duke, you've got to make three throws the rest of the way. Put points on the board, block and stop. Blake back in control. Almost a steal by Ewing. Dixon makes him pay for it. Boy, that's a tough fall away. It really is, Dick, because not only was he fading, he was actually gliding to the left. Really difficult to spot up on that jump shot. One of the candidates for player of the year, Juan Dixon. And the foul on Boozer as he bowls his way inside, and he has his third foul. Let's take a look at the CBS Sportsline stat of the game, Billy. Well, here you have the big advantage that Maryland has, and I don't care if they play today, tomorrow, or four months from now. Maryland's advantage on the inside is really dominant, particularly off the bench with quality play of Randall and Holden. For complete game stats, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Boy, what a nice catch by Baxter. It really was. Down around his ankles, picked it right off. Then leaving rebounds for Duke. Duke down by 19 with six and a half to go. They love to fire the three and Dunleavy off the iron. But it's not often that Dunleavy will have a six foot nine inch guy come running at him, pump fake him, get by him, and have that guy recover well enough to alter the shot. Now he's the man that provides such terrible matchup problems for opponents because he came to Duke as a six five guard. He's grown four inches. Now he's six nine. He's put on some muscle. He can play outside with a ball or inside with the big guys. He says the tallest person he knows of in his entire family tree is six foot two. And here he is at almost 6'10. Good save by Lonnie Baxter. 
Back out, and Dixon will reset the offense with 18 on the shot clock. Burn up some time. Six minutes to go. Nice box double screen. Here's that fadeaway shot again by Dixon. Tipped up and almost in, and tipped again by the ever-present Chris Wilcox. And Baxter hustles down court and denies the shot. And oh. look, without question, the fresh legs of Baxter and Wilcox to cover Randall and Holton have done a tremendous job getting up and down the floor on both ends. Baxter comes out. Duke does not have that opportunity. Big hand for Lonnie Baxter has led this Maryland team in rebounds and blocks the last three seasons. Look at him scramble and Randall comes up with it and Boozer and finally a timeout called by Dixon so it'll be Maryland's ball. <laughs> Ron Dixon wasn't even looking at his teammate. He was trying to find a guy in the striped shirt. Good call. Stops the clock with 5.39 remaining here in Maryland. The number three team in the nation, Maryland's Terrapins leading number one Duke by 19. Impressive resume. So tell me about yourself. So tell me about yourself. Excuse me? Excuse me? What are you doing? What are you doing? You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. Please read back the last question and answer. Question. Given the nature of your experience... Hotjobs.com We're back in Maryland with a reminder tonight on CBS, if you need a breather from the Olympics, try 60 Minutes. they got a story for you. Everyone else will be talking about Monday morning and on our movie of the week, uh, one of the best, Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones won the Academy Award in the blockbuster thriller The Fugitive tonight on CBS. Maryland with the ball in the 19-point lead. Steve Blake uh, protecting that ball so well. Uh, Magnificently throughout today. Solid screen looking for the ball inside for Wilcox. He gives it back to Randall. Now by Jason Williams for the rebound against the bigger man. And throws it away behind Dunleavy. It really has been a revolution for Duke fans watching this game to see this team play that poorly. Turnovers. Incapable from the free throw line, not effective from three point range, six for 25. What team showed up today? Every statistical category that Duke is normally just dominant in, they have been woeful in today. And give full uh, credit, high marks to this Maryland team. We haven't talked enough about how well they played at the defensive end. Absolutely, and it's all been headed by the man that's got the ball in his hands right now, Steve Blake. Reach around on Duhan. That's when you're getting tired, when you're not moving your feet and trying to slap the ball from behind. Not the kind of defense that a Mike Krzyzewski team normally would try to play. Four regular season games remain for Maryland at Clemson, then here a week from today, Wake Forest, then at Florida State and home against Virginia before the conference tournament. All teams playing for the second time in that rotation, all teams they've beaten. Seventh point for Steve Blake. A win for Maryland today would send them to 21 and 3. And Dick, this kind of a victory sends them to a different plateau, too, from a confidence standpoint. No longer do they have to say and question themselves, can we handle Duke? Dante Jones on a feed from Boozer and Wilcox there to deny, but foul is third. Now the Blue Devils, uh, Wake Forest Thursday night at Wake and then we'll have that St. John's game for you on CBS a week from today at Virginia and then they close against rival North Carolina before the tournament. St. John's remember a couple of years ago came down and had a sensational game beating Duke in Durham. Not quite the same team for Mike Jarvis now however. And another free throw miss. Five for 15 from the free throw line for the Blue Devils today. Every aspect of their game has been very unlike Duke. Dixon and Randall out. There's Drew Nicholas and Lonnie Baxter return for Gary Williams Terps. Boozer probably saying, boy, I'd like some fresh minutes like you've been able to have, Lonnie Baxter. Throw ahead to Blake, who takes it all away and then feeds it beautifully to Mouton. 
terrific job by Steve Blake. 13th assist for Steve Blake, one away from a career high and one away from the Maryland all-time record. Duhon inside, makes it 78-58, but Hawk ticks away against Duke, 424 left. Now there's a case where Wilcox really doesn't need to go there. They're in a 20-point situation. Mouton and Jones were elbowing one another in the backboard, and so that last shot whistles off. And there's a case where the Atlantic Coast Conference, which has really come down hard lately on some sportsmanship, Jones being a, a central figure in one case down at Clemson, where Larry Shyatt, the coach, was uh, admonished by the conference commissioner. Their arms just got tangled, but you can see the referee's very sensitive. Mouton's third foul, double bonus now for Duke. Fourth point for Dante Jones. Jones averaging 12 and a half. Played at Rutgers for a couple of years. Was their leading scorer as a sophomore. Sat out last year after the transfer. How about that Rutgers team playing great ball here down the stretch. Well, the Big East is one of the toughest leagues to try to figure out for that tournament committee. Probably eight clubs that uh, really are separated almost by each weekend. It looks a little different. Good defense. Duhan on Blake and almost intercepted by Boozer. There's the fresh legs by Baxter. Pete Carlos Boozer to the spot. And Duhan with a foul for the hold. His second. Maryland now spreading things out. Kind of what Duke likes to do to people normally at this point in the game. Spread you out. Make the defense have to chase. Gary Williams has had this happen to his team in the past and said, I'll turn the tables on you. We looked at Mike Krzyzewski and uh, talking with him before the game. He, he has ever been the basketball professor and perhaps uh, looking into his crystal ball said, you know, you learn from every game. If you don't, you don't get better. There are a lot of things uh, perhaps that he wasn't hoping his team would learn today, but he's going to have some things to work on. By the way, they have brought the chairs back into that locker room at Duke. They move inside and the foul. A group at least showing that they've got a heart of a champion still battling out there, although down by 18. Looking ahead to the final four, what's that tell you? Well, what, what this is, Dick, I like to take the teams in the top 40 in the country and how their RPIs go. You can see right there the Big 12 in great shape. The SEC with eight teams in the top 40. So that that's the league. When you look right now, that tournament committee is going to be looking at these six conferences for an awful lot of the bids. And the Big 12 in pretty good shape. Jason Williams averaging 21 and a half a game off to a slow start today. But a good second half has now scored 17 and a second chance has done Livy for three. Becomes a four point play and it's 78 to 64 as Maryland's lead carved to 14 with 339 left. Mike. Yeah. Instant messaging from Sprint PCS. Proud sponsor of things fast, new, and really quite amazing. And welcome back to Cole Fieldhouse. Maryland's lead uh, down to 14 points. And Billy, uh, prior to the game today, Maryland said, here's what we got at stake. We might become number one for the first time in our history, and we're still playing for that number one seed. Number one seed for the NCAA tournament. Number one seed in the ACC tournament as well, which could put them in pretty good shape. But I think more than anything in regard to seeding, I think that this team today has had to get an awful lot of confidence about their ability to play against Duke. That ball went off Dominique's foot. He knew it and so did the official. Maryland's ball from the side. And a time is called. 36 left. Duke trying to find a way. 14 down. If you can unlock the secrets of nature, you can find miracles. At DuPont, we've been finding them for 200 years now. 
miracles that have taken us from here to there, from this to that, and from where we are to a better, brighter world. DuPont, the miracles of science. Need to refuel? Try a new Reese's Fast Break. Milk chocolate, soft nougats, Reese's peanut butter. Go, 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 go. New Reese's Fast Break. Refuel and go. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. Hi, I'm Susan McGinnis, news anchor for CBS Market Watch. I'm part of a worldwide team of journalists who keep you informed about the markets and your investments on TV, radio, and our website. It's where you should go first for the best information on the markets, analysis of your portfolio, and ideas. Our 24-hour coverage of breaking financial news combined with up-to-the-minute data help you make smart investment decisions. CBS Market Watch is the number one source for financial news. It's more than just news. It's news you can use. Pantheon 4 processor, the center of your digital world. And welcome back. We remind you, stay tuned. Final round coverage of the Nissan Open, a contentious leaderboard that will follow our basketball coverage here at Maryland, where the Terrapins lead by 14 with 336 left. Dick, our old partner Al McGuire used to say the key to the game is to win the game. Now, if you're in Maryland right now, that should be on your mind. Not worry about being sensational. Not worry about margin. Just play solid, and they're not doing that right now. And Chris Duhon saw an opening, slipped around the backside of Baxter to tie him up. The arrow points to Maryland. The objects take some time off the clock, get good shots, and make Duke be the team that has to make all of the gambling mistakes. And Duke now putting some pressure in the backcourt. Duhon especially terrific hands and top defensive players. Nice job by Dixon to go ahead and take over the ball handling responsibility. Jason Williams hawking him. Picked up the dribble and the turnover. Dick Enberg, Billy Packer, welcome to the University of Maryland. Duke, the number one team in the nation, has never led in the game. Fell behind early 6-0. Maryland has built a lead as high as 25 points and currently with a 14-point advantage, 3-15 remaining in this second half. And Williams, a block by Blake and no whistle. All right, that, that was a call that Jason Williams had without question. Should have been a three opportunities for a foul shot. He faked up knowing that the plan was not to worry about taking the shot, but to get fouled on a three-point attempt. No call by the official. And then the foul, Dante Jones, in the next sequence. As you see, the Blue Devils still trying to find a way, and of course, encouraged by recent history just a year ago, when they did score 10 points in 54 seconds to tie the game in the final minute here and then won it in overtime. Well, the all-time comeback in the history of college basketball was Duke against Tulane. But uh, you would be expecting an awful lot to make a move against a team the caliber of Maryland. Maryland now having little problems of their own in the foul line. Luton with 14 on the game. Makes it 79-64, back to a 15-point lead. And Duke will hurry it and try to fire from three-point range. Oh, inside they go to Boozer for the easy two, 79-66. Not a bad idea to go inside some to try to get Maryland off balance, and then you can throw outside for the three. Good pressure in the backcourt, and they finally get it to the ball hander, Blake. The object now is to spread the floor and get some spacing if you're Maryland. Make Duke chase you. You know they're tired. 
inside to the star for the Terps today, the softball Wilcox. Way off the mark, but Baxter there to convert. He pushed stick from behind. Foul on Baxter. No basket. His third foul. Double-double for Chris Wilcox, who has 23 points and 11 rebounds and has played tough defensively as well. It's been a complete game for this budding sophomore. And through a 90 sophomore touchdown pass on an out-of-bounds play, so he's about covered everything. Boozer with 12 points at the line. And Duke pulls within 12. Duke shooting 68% from the line. Once again, making more free throws on the year as they usually do than their opponents get to shoot. But they're 50% today, 11 for 22. And that pair by Boozer. Nice subtle move right here by Gary Williams. Brings Nichols in so he has got an extra ball handler. Three guards on the floor for Maryland. Smothering defense, Duhon. He can really play the ball. That's all the more credit to Blake for the game he's had today going up against a good defender. 24 and the clock ticking here. Good defense, Williams. Oh, a good save by Nicholas and then the trip as Dante Jones came over to cover. But again, good move by Maryland right there. Spread the floor, make Duke have to make the mistakes. One of the things Dixon is doing, he's done it twice in a row, Dick, he's picking up his dribble when played by Williams. He's got to keep that dribble alive because Duke is overplaying all the passing lanes. Gary Williams, as usual, looks as if he's been in the sauna with that Brooks Brothers suit of his. And uh, this has been one to sweat out for him, although he had a 25-point lead. That lead down to 11. And Nicholas with his fourth point of the game. Gives uh, Williams some quality minutes, doesn't he? He really does. And, and that is the one move that Gary Williams can make in the backcourt. In the case of the front court, though, he has multiple moves. Maryland 17 for 22 at the line. Williams, Boozer follows. Baxter trying to come over to help out, but that's what I thought Jason Williams would start doing in the beginning of this second half. 2.09 left. Duke back within 11. There's never been a better time to hit the trails because it's Suzuki Fest time. Let us reward you when you buy a new Suzuki Quad Runner ATV. Suzuki Fest rewards as low as 2.95% APR financing available on selected Quad Runner models like the Vincent 500 and so many more at great rates too. Or how about up to $400 in your choice of free accessories? Virtually anything you want. Our deals have never been this good, but you have to get down to Suzuki Fest soon. Then go hit the trails. That 25-point lead evaporating in the second half as Duke fans with hope within 11, 2.09 to go. Now give Duke a lot of credit, Dick, for not giving up at all. You knew they certainly would not. But on the other hand, I don't think Maryland has played very well in terms of using clock and taking advantage of the position they were in. Almost another pickoff. Sloppy pass. This is the man they want to handle it. Steve Blake outstanding. Best in the country, uh, assist to turnover ratio. There's Dixon down in that baseline, trying to get open for oh, Williams. Jason Williams, a near steal, but Juan Dixon, the leading scorer for Maryland, connects. He has 17. This is a nice move by Maryland, posted up Dixon down inside. Duhon misses the three. Dunleavy to Boozer. And the foul against Dunleavy for the charge, and that will be all. For Mike Dunleavy, his fifth. The officials have been very consistent on that play all day. Dunleavy leaves with 15 points and 11 rebounds. Brad, Brad Paxson and Scott McCarron with Taniguchi sharing the lead. Uh, our last report from uh, Riviera. We'll go out to that final round coverage at the conclusion of the game. How about that guy at 11 under? He has to be probably watching this game in the side. Fred Funk, a Maryland former Maryland. Uh, golf coach here. I bet he's getting reports. Reports between shots. He was the golf coach here. Yeah, he sure was. 
At the line, Lonnie Baxter, the hulking 6'8 senior from Silver Spring, Maryland, one of five Lonnie players Baxter on the court today that are in the final list for both the Naismith and Wooden Awards Player of the Year. Now, uh, Dick, we have of active NCAA scorers, Jason Williams is the highest player with 191 points. Dixon is number three with 121. Baxter is number four with 115. The only guy that's in, in the middle there is Haslam from Florida. So we've got three of the four leading career scores in NCAA play on the floor as we speak. Terrific game for young Chris Wilcox. He's given a breather as Baxter, not a good free throw shooter, hits them both. Looks like he's a 93%, not a 59% and Williams pulls up for the three. Maryland went a little zone right there. Blocked by Nicholas, and Williams can't hit the follow. Boozer can. I and a timeout by Harvard Coach K. He's going to try to do everything he can to go ahead and expand this game as long as he can be out there. 78 seconds to go. Change the face of digital photography with the Intel Pentium 4 processor, the center of your digital world. I feel good. Who am I playing? John McEnroe. Oh, man. Hey, Mike. Hey, you're going to take it easy on me, right? Uh, no. I'll give you a buck. What can you do with a buck? You can dial 1010-220. All calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. Really? And 7 cents a minute after 20. 20 minutes for 99 cents? Is that a good deal? What? You can't be serious. It's a great deal. I like this guy. We got this one. Dial 1010-220. Cole Fieldhouse, it's 47th and final year of hosting Maryland basketball, and uh, this might be a game to remember, as Maryland never relinquishing the lead they have been most impressive. Surprised you at all how well they played today, you know, beating Duke as they have? I expected Maryland to play at this level, but to be quite honest with you, Dick, I thought that Duke would up at a level right. as well, and I think that Maryland took everything away from them in this game. And really, because of their dominance on the inside, they've been able to prevail. 13-point lead. Blake leaves Duhan in the wake. Dixon with Jason Williams as we approach the final minute. We have one minute to play. Now watch for the five-second count. Dixon throws it away. No, it was touched. It was touched on the deflection. So Maryland, with 11 on the shot clock, will play it in 54.1 seconds. Gary Williams shouting instructions. He can remember coming to the national championship here when he was in college and sneaking in to watch a game. He didn't have to sneak in today. An on-campus facility that has hosted two NCAA finals. The only such facility that's done that. Dixon misfires. Here comes Jason Williams. All tough. And, and Blake uh, is everywhere, isn't he? Yeah, but a foul will be called from the far side on Blake. Wow, I didn't see any foul on the play at all. And if it was, it was a delayed call. Oh, they're saying now that Blake actually touched the ball. So therefore, Jason Williams could recover. Arrow pointing to Duke. 37.8 seconds. A quick three from Jason Williams. Shot was altered by Blake. Got right under his elbow without touching his elbow. Nicholas couldn't bring in the rebound, so Duke another chance. 32.4. Steve Blake has been outstanding. From the deep corner. Duhan can't connect. Baxter with a rebound and the quick foul by Duke. And Dick, we have a situation where Maryland has committed fewer fouls than Duke. What that has meant for Maryland in the past is that they win. They are now 33-0 where they commit fewer fouls than that opponent. Well, you see those rabid fans across the way. These Maryland students and fans have been waiting a full year since that heartbreaking loss here and then the loss in the semifinals. You know they're going to storm the court at the conclusion of this game. 28.4 left. Well, from the time that they had that loss, 
They had a situation where they lost a close one in the ACC semifinals as well. And then you know how they had to feel with a 22-point lead sitting there at the Final Four, thinking they were ready to advance to the championship game. And how about that? Lonnie Baxter hits four straight free throws here in the final two minutes. Gary Williams has done a fine job substituting today as big people. Blocking oh, foul block. against Baxter. He knew what was coming. Boozer made a commitment from the top of the key. Boozer at 6'9 and a 280 pound fullback up the lane. Four fouls on Baxter. You know, Mike Krzyzewski is the master psychologist. And one of the things that would be interesting for this game, because it doesn't represent anything about the way he coaches a team or the way they normally play. I wonder if they'll have, instead of reviewing this tape by the team, a burning of this tape. Say, guys, you know, that's a memory we don't even want to think about. He's already coaching for oh, the oh, next absolutely. Oh, yeah, for the absolutely. locker room and for next week. They don't allow the press to see practices, which is an unusual practice, especially by Coach K. He said, it's not that we're trying to lock you out. We're trying to lock ourselves in. And of course, this is the same man who two, three years ago said, everybody come because I want my players to be accustomed to the melee, the frenzy of the media. Now he's working. Uh, as a master psychiatrist. Now, if you read his book, Five Point Play, you'll see where some of that comes from. But the master today has been not the Mike Krzyzewski. It's been, it's been Gary, Gary Williams. Williams. And all, all hands, all credit to Gary Williams and this Maryland Terrapin team. They have defeated number one Duke, 87 to 73, and the celebration is on. a former Maryland point guard in his 13th year coaching his alma mater one of his biggest wins 87 to 73 is it good enough to vault Maryland into the number one spot in the nation for the first time in its basketball history one thing it probably has assured a number one seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament a big big win for the Terrapins the final round coverage of the LA Nissan Open will follow shortly from Los Angeles with uh, Leaderboard that is uh, packed or six or seven men uh, close enough to the lead to be able to win the top prize and the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game Chris Wilcox from Maryland with 23 points and 11 rebounds Mike Dunleavy a double double for Duke with 15 points and 11 boards Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. And so, for Billy Packer, this is Dick Enberg. So long from Coalfield House in, uh, at the University of Maryland, where the Terrapins have defeated number one Duke, 87-73. to 73. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship. In and out. Good. Keep the victim calm. And one and two and three. Okay, there you go. It's over 130 channels, sports, news, entertainment, even your local channels, and it's only $39.99 a month. Just $39.99 a month, over 130 channels of DirecTV programming, even your local ones. Now get a DirecTV system for $49 or less, installed. So it was the digital music that... Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Impressive resume. So tell me about yourself. So tell me about yourself. Excuse me? Excuse me? What are you doing? What are you doing? You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. You realize if you continue in this manner, you'll be held in contempt pursuant to Rule 37B1. Please read back the last question and answer. Question. Given the nature of your experience... Hotjobs.com
Morning, Mike. Ah. Instant messaging from Sprint PCS. Proud sponsor of things fast, new, and really quite amazing. Five players separated by only two shots at the top of the leaderboard at the Nissan Open. Brad Faxon with this birdie became one of the leaders at 14 under par. It's Faxon and McCarran, Taniguchi in third, then Matisse and Sabatini. Wide open final round at the Nissan. Coverage coming up shortly. Tonight, Tommy Lee Jones and Harrison Ford. I didn't kill my wife. The movie that still leaves you breathless. The Fugitive CBS Tonight. Watch Monday's highest rated show, Everybody Loves Raymond, only on CBS. It's the world's greatest mattress sale. This week, pay absolutely nothing for one full year. Every mattress with free express delivery, free setup and removal, or free metal bed frame. And pay absolutely nothing for one full year at all seven Valley locations, including our newest at 69th Avenue and West Bell. Oh, oh, Oasis, Oasis Bedroom makes it all so nice to say good. It's anniversary savings time at Childress Buick on Camelback. Every new Buick is on sale. And to celebrate their 42nd anniversary, Childress will double the factory incentive on any new 2002 model. That means up to $4,004 in savings. Plus, from now through February 28th, buy any new 2002 Buick at Childress and get lifetime free oil changes. Join the celebration and save during the big anniversary sale at Childress Buick. Still the friendliest place in town. Childress, 23rd Avenue in Camelback. Right on target. Now there's a men's hair color made to target only your gray hair. Grecian 5. It's right on target. In five easy minutes, Grecian 5 targets only the gray hair, replaces it with subtle tones like your own natural color. Right on target. It matches the rest of your hair for a subtle, natural look. Grecian 5 targets only the gray. Kerry Pfeffer, Diana Sullivan, weeknights at 5, 6, and 10. Here in Los Angeles, a tightly... A huge day in the ACC wraps up tonight at Wake Forest University. End of the season, everybody's a little punchy, a little chippy, you know, a little frustrated, players a little banged up, you know, anxious, everybody's fighting for something. NCAA bid, NIT bid, winning season, whatever. For both Virginia and Wake Forest, this game and every game through the remainder of the season, critical in hopes of reaching the NCAA tournament. We welcome you to Winston-Salem, North Carolina for ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples as the Virginia Cavaliers take on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. And a pleasant good evening to you alongside the former Carolina All-American Kenny Smith. I'm Tom Brenneman welcoming you to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. It's been a strange year for the Virginia Cavaliers, Kenny. Inconsistent most of the season up and down. And of course, then there's the problem playing away from home where they have not played well. And a big reason why perhaps they've really never settled on a true point guard all year. Well, I don't think they feel real comfortable in their ball handling duties. And so Roger Mason, who's really a shooting guard, has played primarily sometime at the point, and then the freshman keep Jennifer. So once they settle in on who's going to be their starting point guard, I think that's going to help them in the ACC tournament and the NCAA tournament. The one thing Virginia can count on night in and night out, the play of their power forward slash center, the big fella, Travis Watson. Well, Travis Watson has done a great job in his scoring this year, but more importantly, his rebounding ability has really helped them, one, get on the fast break, and two, it's also helped him get extra shots for himself without having to get touches from the offensive end with no point guard who's settled in yet. Meanwhile for Wake Forest, they've lost two in a row and the news keeps getting worse. They will be without their star forward tonight, Josh Howard, who is still bothered by that high ankle sprain. So, Kenny, that means they need even bigger numbers out of the senior Darius Sungailan. 
Well, right now, that just puts a lot of pressure on Darius because what happens is you had someone to defer to in Josh Howard. You had a guy that when you had a double team, you can go to and say, you know what, you take over for a while. But now, Wake Forest has to find out who's going to be that second scorer now that Josh Howard's not playing. Well, they got 38 out of Craig Dawson in the double overtime loss at Count Clemson. They could use that again tonight. By right now, let's send it to Los Angeles in our studio with Kevin Craig. Tom, thanks a lot, and welcome inside the house that Hoops built, the exclusive home of ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Staples. I'm Kevin Frazier. Now, for 17th-ranked Wake Forest, tonight marks the start of a key three-game stretch in which they will face a trio of the ACC's best, Virginia, Duke, and Maryland. Now, remember, Wake is winless against that trio. Back on January 15th, the Cavs knocked off the Demon Deeks as junior Roger Mason led the way with 25 in a 12-point victory. Four days later, Wake was completely overwhelmed by Duke, 103-80, to as all five Blue Devil starters scored in double figures and the stretch ended with another demoralizing defeat as Maryland beat coach Prosser's team by 18 at home. All season long, Wake has struggled against the nation's best. That must change versus top 25 teams this season. Wake is only 2-6. and six. They're shooting just 42% from the floor and the bench is almost non-existent adding to 17 points in those games. And they must do better, especially against teams like Duke and Maryland. Speaking of those two, we all remember Duke's last visit to Cole Fieldhouse when the Blue Devils erased a 10-point deficit in the final minute. This time, things were different. You're watching ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Staples. How sweet it is to play at the river all month. Or you could win cash up to $2,500, a tropical cruise for two to Hawaii, a one-carat diamond ring, or an eight-hour limousine package with $1,000 to spend. Just fill out a free entry form, and you'll soon see just how sweet it is to play at the river. Go to the river, the river, casinos. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, no car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430, at your Lexus dealer. I wonder how many of them are ready for the day when they head home for retirement. If they're TD Waterhouse customers, chances are they're prepared. Because TD Waterhouse has an online retirement planner, along with retirement specialists at all their branches. It's time you checked in at TD Waterhouse before you head home for work and close shop for good. Open an IRA and get a one-year subscription to Money Magazine. TD Waterhouse, you're in control. Welcome back to ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. One of the keys for the Demon Deacons recently, Broderick Hicks. Over the last four games, the senior guard has averaged a sizzling 18 points. All right, let's check on the other action in the conference this afternoon. Of course, the big game. Number three, Maryland, hosting top-ranked Duke. Both teams with just one conference loss. Terps came out, fired up. The big man, Chris Wilcox, playing the passing lane. He has the bucket there. He had a career-high 23 points and 11 rebounds late in the first half. Jason Williams talking to Coach K. Steve Blake picks his pocket, gets the bucket. Tough day for Jason Williams. He was 6 of 22 from the floor. Blake and the Terps pumped all afternoon long. Second half more, Marilyn Juan Dixon, the senior from Baltimore, percolating. He had 17, and later, Blake again. The spicy Jackie takes away from Dante Jones. Blake had only 8 points, but he had 13 assists. Coach Kane crew for a long day, and then this just typified the day. The touchdown pass from Wilcox to Dixon. How does that happen against Duke? Hey, there's a party over here because Maryland wins this one 87 to 73. So Maryland breaks its four year skid at Cole Field House against Duke with the win. More from the ACC. Florida State visiting North Carolina. Adam Boone heats up the kid from Minnesota flowing. He had a career high 28 points and then Chris Lang, as usual, rough inside. He dropped 21 points. North Carolina, raise up. Coach Doherty and crew get their third conference win of the season. Hey, uh, speaking of the Tar Heels, next Sunday on ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Staples, North Carolina travels down to Backo Road to battle number 24 North Carolina State in a key conference game for the Wolfpack. 
That's next Sunday at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Uh, by the way, if the season ended tonight, here's who would face off in the ACC tourney. Look at that 4-5 matchup between North Carolina State and Virginia. And also remember, Florida State beat Duke. Anyway, up next, we're headed back to Wake as the Demon Deacons get set to face Virginia. And we'll also check in on the rest of the nation, including Wooden Award candidate Jared Jeffries. He's just a sophomore, but he's ready. You're watching ACC Sunday Night Hoops, presented by Staples. The low Lugra price is your best price, but adding any one option for a dollar is even better. Lugrub Dodge and Lugrub Chrysler Jeep announce any one option for a dollar. See hundreds of Dodges, Jeeps, and Chryslers at the low Lugrub price. Then take your choice of CD, chrome wheels, or sunroof for a dollar. Plus, get a seven year, 100,000 mile powertrain pledge. Hurry, one dollar buys any one option and Sunday at Lugrub Dodge and Lugrub Chrysler Jeep. Welcome to the best damn sports store, period. Hey, who's the new girl? That's Tanya Harding. How you doing? We got 13 here. Oh, uh, well maybe you can let me slide just this one time. Now you got 12. Comedy commentary highlights the best damn sports show, period. I'd like to speak to your manager, please. Clear it. Clear it, May. Move in, down. He shoots. He scores. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. Here's the guy who led the way last time these two teams met. Roger Mason Jr. led all scorers with 25 points. All right, let's head back to Lawrence Joel Coliseum where the third member of our broadcast team, Dwayne Bowen, is standing by. Dwayne? Kevin, we are honored to have one of the most electrifying, exciting players to ever wear the black and gold of Wake Forest from 1984 to 1987. Number 14 thrilled Demon Deacon fans with his on-court exploits. Tyrone Muggsy Bogue, the career leader at the school, in steals and assists. He led the Demon Deacons to two postseason appearances and was all ACC and generally a pain for every team that wasn't wearing black and gold. Number 14 now hangs from the Raptors here at Lawrence Joel Coliseum. We are very happy to honor and welcome Tyrone Muggsy Bogues to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Thanks for having me. 1984, team you were on, Cinderella Deek knocked off number one DePaul, reached the final eight in the NCAA tournament. You'd see anything like that in this group of Demon Deacons. Absolutely, even more so. I think they have more athletes than we did in the past. And uh, with these guys' uh, ability to get up and down the floor and uh, the camaraderie that they're building, they can go as far as they want to be. Tyrone Muggsy Bogues, our guest on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. We're ready to go from Joe Coliseum, Kevin. Dwayne, thanks a lot. And let's not forget Muggsy Bogues, a Baltimore guy on his high school team for the five starters, number one draft picks. He's a great player. All right, let's quickly check in on the rest of the nation. We start with Big East action, number 13, Miami, visiting Rutgers. The story, Jerome Coleman, the junior, tied a school record with eight threes. He finished with a career-high 30 points. We picked this one up late in the second half, under five seconds play. Miami down by three. Darius Rice for the tie? I don't think so. Rutgers upsets Miami 64-61, the final score. Rutgers sets a school record by beating a ranked team for the fourth time this season. Big win for them. Elsewhere, number 22, Indiana, pulled back into a first-place tie with Ohio State in the Big Ten by overwhelming Michigan. Big 12 battle between Texas and Missouri. Freshman T.J. Fork has a double-double as he has 18 points and 12 assists in the Longhorn win. And Syracuse in the Big East knocks off the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame, 68-65. to Syracuse sweep the season series with Notre Dame. I, of course, will see you back here at halftime with our weekly edition of the ACC Remix. But up next, Darius Singala. He's got to play big. The Demon Deeks face off against Virginia. It's the Cavs and Demon Deacons, and it's on the way.
So, set up a department meeting for tomorrow and put in a call to the client. Get them up to speed. Anything else? Here's a thought. Instead of saving money by not using paper, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 Savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. I like that. Jot that down. Low prices on every item, every day. Staples 365 Savings. Yeah, we've got that. Her son led me into the desert. I can't believe this is really happening. She can't resist my touch. I love you. Together we dance alone in the wilderness. Yes. I am a glorious man. Brown says make your life easy. Brown tells me you have all the choices you want. Brown says to me, get your shipments to your customers when they need it, where they need it. Brown says relax. We'll get it done. Brown says, how about some more pie? Brown would say that. Shipping on your schedule. What could Brown do for you?